So get this, you can now sell your spare internet to earn crypto passive income while you sleep. I, I swear to God, this is not even clickbait. It's just the next extension of the sharing economy. And in this video, I'll show you exactly how to do this. So here's a question, is your home internet a fixed service fee or is it a metered solution where you pay for what you use? Most likely you pay a monthly fee for a specific bandwidth speed. So this begs the question, for all that time that you're not using the internet, say while you're sleeping, can you sell that spare capacity? Well now the answer is yes. See the rise of the sharing economy has given way to companies like Airbnb, Uber, Toro, which enable owners to sell the idle or inefficiently managed resources to be used when the owners are not using them. And in this new model, something like owning a house can begin to mirror something like owning a business. And owning a car would be like owning a car rental service with a fleet of one. In the same vein, the Mysterium network enables you to create nodes and allow other peers to utilize your public IP address and bandwidth. Think of us as Tor Browser but incentivized with cryptocurrency payments. Anyone can join by running a node and adding their IP address to the network. This people-powered network is permissionless, meaning anyone, anywhere can join, and trustless, because you don't need to trust the people you're transacting with thanks to a unique payments mechanism. And the way it does this is entirely decentralized and 100% trustless just like many of my failed relationships. And we'll be walking through this process step by step and reveal exactly how much we earned in the process. But first, what is the Mysterium network? According to their website, Mysterium is an open source ecosystem of tools, infrastructure, and protocols to help liberate the web. The Mysterium network offers the privacy of Tor with the speed of traditional VPNs. Mysterium is your foundation for peer-to-peer -peer networking and unblocking tools. And peer-to-peer -peer solutions are great as long as that peer is not Mark Zuckerberg. Historically, services such as these have been used by countries experiencing censorship issues due to civil unrest. In the same way that Twitter was used to help galvanize protests during the Arab Spring, recent protests in Myanmar have been using the Mysterium network to help circumvent censorship and government suppression. And if that's true, that's pretty laudable because government censorship is usually a coercive maneuver. And recently, on November 27th, Mysterium launched its mainnet, which kickstarted the borderless internet Web 3.0 platform. The open source Swiss based Web 3 project is challenging the $30 billion VPN industry by introducing a novel decentralized VPN. And real quick, unlike Ethereum, there is no gas limit on expressing your gratitude. So go ahead and click that like button and help us evangelize the good word of crypto. Thanks. So first off, what is a VPN? So according to NordVPN.com, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, and it's a service that protects your internet connection and privacy online. It creates an encrypted tunnel for data, protects your online identity, and hides your IP address. So with that in mind, what is a decentralized VPN or DVPN? Well, a DVPN differs from a traditional VPN in three distinct ways. First, the network is not centralized within any one organization, and it runs completely trustless and relies on a community of random peers. Second, it tends to be cheaper. It doesn't rely on subscriptions, know your customer payments, or any sort of middlemen in order to operate. And third, the service is unblockable by conventional means. And the use of VPNs is really a growing trend that continues to rise rapidly. Uh, this Google Trends chart shows the increase in search queries for the term VPN following the congressional hearing to overthrow the Privacy Act. And finally, what is Web 3.0? There are many definitions, but in this context, Mysterium would be moving to a Web 3.0 model by moving away from centralized
decentralized servers and instead enlisting the help of the Ethereum blockchain. They would be hosting their databases, uh, payment solution, and servers on the Ethereum blockchain, which confers a number of benefits to its users. So before we dive into running the Mysterium node on our Raspberry Pi, let's talk a second about how we're actually going to get paid. Mysterium utilizes a coin called Mist, which incentivizes node availability on their network. And Mist is really just the utility token at the heart of the Mysterium network. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set up our Raspberry Pi so we can get started creating our Mysterium node. Okay, so now we just want to take our micro SD card out of the Raspberry Pi so we can insert it into our computer. Okay, and the way I do this is by using a uh, micro to SD adapter. So I'm just gonna throw it in like so, and then I will throw this into my computer so that we can format the card. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is download the Mysterium node RPI image from docs.mysterium.network. I'm gonna go ahead and click this. We're also gonna go ahead and download Bolina Etcher from their website. Okay, and then we should be able to find Bolina Etcher and launch it. Okay, so Etcher was installed, it's now launched, and we're gonna do flash from file. We're gonna select the Mysterium Raspberry Pi image that we downloaded. Should be on my desktop, there it is. Mistberry.zip. And then we're gonna uh, select the target drive, and this is gonna be the Apple SD card. Make sure we have the right drive selected here because it's going to overwrite the entire disk. So Apple SD, 32 gigabyte, that is correct. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and select flash. Okay, and then it says to make yourself a T and wait until your flash is complete. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make some T and I even have raspberry T in the spirit of this video. Okay, our flash is now complete. So now we're gonna take the micro SD card out and insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Okay, should be good. Okay, so now we're going to plug in our Raspberry Pi and get everything set up. Okay, I'm just gonna make sure to plug in my network cable, my ethernet. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and boot this up. Okay, so the default username there was mist, M-Y-S-T, and the password was mistberry. Okay, so just real quick, if you don't wanna use the ethernet cable and you want to use Wi-Fi, we can set up the Wi-Fi um, uh, directly on our Raspberry Pi here. Uh, Based on what we're trying to do, Ethernet makes a whole lot more sense because we're trying to make available our internet connection, but I realize that's not gonna be an option for everyone, so that's fine. Um, so what we're gonna do at the terminal here, and we're controlling our Raspberry Pi, is we'll type, uh, sorry, we'll do sudo raspi hyphen config, and then we will go to system options, uh, wireless LAN, and then select the country, country. Okay, and then we're gonna do our wireless network name. Uh, we're gonna do okay. okay. And then we'll select finish. And I guess we're going to have to re reboot. And I'm gonna pull out the ethernet cable just so we can demonstrate this point. So again, now there's no ethernet cable. Okay, and I just wanted to make sure it had internet. So I just did curl google.com 
and it returned a web page. So it does look like I have internet even though uh, there's no ethernet connection. So it should have a Wi-Fi connection. Okay, so now that the Raspberry Pi node is set up, I can actually unplug it from the television and I can kind of just leave it be for a while. So let's see here. So I just unplugged the HDMI. I'm just gonna take this, throw it over here. I can unplug the peripheral devices and I can just let it sit there. Now I have this node any, um, any of the bandwidth that's being used is not gonna affect uh, the computers I'm using. It's not gonna consume the CPU, which would be a problem. So this will kind of just run independently um, and it will utilize my internet connection and provide VPN access around the globe. Okay, so now that our Raspberry Pi is booted up, we wanna get the IP address of it so that we can remotely connect to it over SSH. So one way to do that is to log into your router admin page and it should show all host names and IP addresses of connected devices. So I'm gonna log in real quick. Okay, and then I can come over to connected devices and this guy right here, Raspberry Pi, this is going to be my uh, Mysterium node IP address. Another thing I just wanna call out here is, if you have any issues connecting to uh, the web portal or the Raspberry Pi starting, probably because um, these services use non-standard ports, a lot of routers automatically block non-standard ports. So if you're getting any of those sort of issues, like the, the UI is not standing up or something, log into your router admin page, go to firewall, and go to IPv4. You might want to do it for IPv6 as well, but definitely IPv4. And you're going to want to change some of the settings so that it's not blocking every non-standard port. For me, it looked like going from high security to low security, but you can customize it in any way you want. But that's probably what's blocking you. Okay, and then if we want to log into our Raspberry Pi remotely, we should be able to do SSH mist at IP address. Okay, so it looks like there was a conflict with previous um, SSH credentials. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this folder here and there should be a file called known hosts. And we're just gonna go ahead and kill that. And let's go ahead and try this again. So, all right, that looks much better. Again, username is missed, password is mistberry. So now we are logged into our node. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and change my password. So I'm gonna do pass wd, okay. Okay, so now we should be able to go to this local address here. Okay, and now we can set up our node from this web UI. So I'm gonna click uh, start node setup. Okay, and I'm also gonna create a account on misnodes.com so that I can claim my own node. So I'm gonna do create account. Okay, now that I have an account, I'm gonna log in. Okay, since we did all of this, I'm going to just breeze through this. Okay, so now I am in my dashboard here. Okay, so I, I went ahead and just clicked get it here because I do want to claim my node. So I clicked get it here after creating my account on Mysterium and then my API token was provided. So I copied that and now I am dropping that in the local web portal. So one thing I am gonna do is if I come over to the dashboard here, I'm gonna enable this only Mysterium verified partner traffic just so that I can ensure nothing nefarious is going on on my network. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this and that will restart the services. And then I just wanna show you on misnodes.com and this is actually the remote website, not the local website. If I go to my nodes, this also has information about my setup here, so we can see that my node is listed here. Okay, and real quick, I wanna show you what the results of having my node online for three days was. So during that three day period, I earned 0.15 mist. Currently, a mist is worth about 60 cents. So in USD, I earned almost 10 cents. Now, I think I could improve uh, my income if I had used Ethernet instead of Wi-Fi because the Ethernet is substantially faster than Wi-Fi. 
Additionally, apparently there's like a node discovery propagation component where once uh, clients find your node, they might be more inclined to use it in the future. Uh, and then, you know, if the value of a mist goes up, then that income also becomes worth more in the future. Um, and and I, I would just say that this is, this is more lucrative than crypto mining, especially for like a device like a Raspberry Pi. So I would just say that, you know, I could handle a lot more traffic than this based on my internet connection. So there's nothing stopping me from, in theory, earning a lot more income and really subsidizing my internet bill um, because I'd be providing that access to others. So this is actually a very interesting concept to me. Probably not worth the squeeze for me right now, but um, you know, as the network matures, that, that might change. Okay, so one thing we do want to do is provide our ERC20 wallet address so that we can receive payments. So for this, I'm just going to use my MetaMask wallet address. So I'm going to click copy to clipboard, and then I'm going to throw it right in here and click save. So now that I just taught you how to earn passive income with VPN nodes, you should have the spare capacity to subscribe to my channel. Anyways guys, thanks for listening.